This is Thomas Lyons for Raps on TV. Down here in the old Spratfall Market in London for the public workouts for Alan Brown, ahead of the March 20th card at the Matchroom um, event on Sky Sports. Fortunate to be joined by former middleweight champion of the world, Darren Barker. First of Darren. Never, I'll never get sick of hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> but how are, you, uh, how are you doing anyway, Darren? Yeah, very well, thanks. Um, got the two kids here. Um, I'm glad we had a good turnout today because uh, all the fighters deserve the respect they're getting. So, yeah. Um, I'm happy, I'm happy. No, I mean, great sports, it seems to be growing and growing. Obviously, another massive card on another major platform. See Dave Allen uh, stepping up into, yeah. I mean, into a big test at uh, heavyweight against uh, Lucas Brown. Obviously, has, is kind of well known to the uh, the British public over here uh, for his fights with uh, Dillian White, for for example. So, I mean, how do you assess this uh, kind of test for, for Dave particularly, but just the fight in general, your opinions? But you could arguably say it's the biggest fight of his life. He's had some big opportunities already. You know, against Ortiz, White, uh, Yoka, but this one's massive. This is this is really big because uh, this potentially could change his life in the sense that people stop referring to Dave as you know this sort of nearly man, this comedian, somebody don't take it serious. This is an opportunity to sort of show to everyone that he can actually box. You know, he's he's a good fighter. He's you know he's uh, he's got more to him than just a great chin, big arm, durability. He's, he can actually can actually fight. And yeah. uh, in that sense, that's why I think this fight can change his life. Yeah, and I mean, Dave kind of, like you said there, he's kind of encapsulated that, that knit and grit, determined style uh, that we kind of see with him. Kind of uh, the fights that he's had with Dylan, uh, Dylan White taking in the distance. And also kind of other fights that he's had um, kind of recently, the uh, the massive uh, knockout win that he had over uh, Nick Webb. Yeah. Also kind of is a, a kind of a highlight uh, reel and an example of kind of his talent and uh, sort of where we would like to kind of see him in the kind of upper upper tiers of the heavyweight division. Um, for you, Darren, uh, particularly in this camp, uh, your impetus uh, with Dave, how has that kind of benefited his training style, his routine? His I don't want to say too much credit for anything, really. You know, Dave's got put in the hard work. I'm just someone who's been involved in boxing my whole life and it's all I really know and I've referred to myself and other people in the trade, you know, uh, we're, we're, when you've reached the heights that I have and been involved in it as long as I have, you know, you can call me a, a doctor, a pilot, a solicitor, a lawyer, you know, when it comes to boxing I am of that ilk, you know, I'm, it's all I know and I, I, I like to think, that's not being big headed or anything like that, it's just all I know, you know, I have to be a good dad, a good husband and I know boxing. Um, so I think me being able to give him some advice and uh, technical yeah, know-how and a bit of ring craft and trying to give him some of my experience. I mean, he seems to be taking it all on board. Yeah, it's highly unlikely this fight's going to go the distance, but I mean, in terms of your prediction for the fight, in terms of uh, the explosiveness that we kind of see with uh, Dave come forward, kind yeah. of strong, aggressive style, able yeah. to use his jab yeah. and kind of use that array of uh, shots he's got. Um, yeah, I know. Just kind of talk to me a little bit about um, sort of Dave's improvement as a, as a fighter, his mentality now, this camp. He seems a lot more trim, a lot more focused. Uh, yeah, he's, just kind of... he's worked so hard. He's listening to everything I'm telling him. He knows how important this fight is. And um, like I say, he's got the opportunity to change his life. And um, I'm expecting, as long as he doesn't switch off, because that's the only chance I give Brown is if Dave switches off for a split second, we know it can all be curtains. Yeah. The last thing a fighter loses is his punch. But for me, I, Dave's got the opportunity to put on a masterclass um, next Saturday, just because in my opinion, Brown's made for him. I think he can really put on a masterclass, but he has to stay switched on. Uh, and then another big fight beckons. And in this current heavyweight climate, you never know what's around the corner. And we've, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go, but look at my prison. They're, they're nuts. Um, with with um, that, give, using that as an example, that big uh, knockout against Webb, never know how far they could go. You just don't know, do you? You know, with, that, with the chin he's got, the desire, the heart, the durability, plus that big, sh that big shot, you just don't know. Oh, right, you got you don't yeah, and I mean, it kind of leads on to my next question about the uh, the current climate and landscape of the heavyweight division. Obviously, booming as ever. Sorry, I'm, I, know, I keep going like that. Just trying to keep an eye on my kids. Charlie, be right. careful. 
Yeah, that's what I've done. But yeah, like just talking about both the upper echelons of the, uh, the heavyweight division. Obviously, got uh, Andy Joshua kind of reigning at the top, unified heavyweight champion. Yeah. Tyson Fury after his layoff comeback and that kind of performance against uh, Wilder. So, I mean, who do you um, kind of see reigning supreme at the top of the division? AJ. He's got the belts, he's got the marbles, and he's the main man. You can say what you want. Oh, you're a corporate man, you're this, you're that. Give me his belts. I want to, I want to be him. He's number one. Um, and I think rightly so. Um, and then after I go Fury, then Wilder. Um, right now, that, that's, that's my top three. Um, and then, yeah, I'll go, hold on, so AJ, Fury, Wilder. Yeah. And as, as a kind of a next... Think, yeah. yeah. Good, no, I was about to say, you know, there, there's a bit of a gap now, I think, between them. I think Dillian White's on the cuffs of getting up there. Um, but yeah, them three are reigning supreme at the minute. Uh, and rightly so, but AJ for me, rightly, is, is number one. Yeah, and obviously Joshua makes his uh, US debut in uh, MSG in New York. Can't on wait, first. I'm out there. Uh, against Jarrell, Big Baby yeah, Miller. Looking forward to it. Do you see that being a kind of a stiff test for, for AJ? Again, you know, he's, he's so durable, he's got such a good chin. Um, I mean, it was. Okay, I'll rewind that because we don't know if he's got a good chin yet, really. But if he has, with the size that he carries, if he's still standing after six rounds, he's still coming forward after six rounds, then things could get interesting. But for me, AJ is several leagues above. Um, punches, he does have a chin, he's been down, he's got back up. So, yeah, I, no, I think AJ gets him out of there. With four six, if Miller's still standing after six, then you know it could get a little interesting. But there's only one winner. And just before I let you go, see, um, kind of with the the card from top to bottom on uh, April 20th, got the likes of uh, Chisora on the card, got uh, kind of Ben Bank, Joe Cordina, yeah. another top prospect, uh, John Harden Jr. on his first major platform uh, from the small scene, now making that transition to the pro. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, a healthy time for British boxing. Also, oh, of course it is. There's, there's plenty of depth, and that all stems from the GB setup. Rob McCracken's doing a fantastic job with all the lads uh, up in Sheffield at the EIS, and that's where it all comes from. You know, we've got great, great pedigree here. Um, so yeah, I mean, look, the, the future of British boxing is very bright. I mean, the future of world boxing is really good. You know, with Matchroom sort of taking over uh, every sort of continent of the world, there's going to be big shows. There's going to be big opportunities for fighters out there. So yeah, I'm, um, I'm, I'm. I'm Glad to be this side of it now. It's, yeah. it's good, you know. I, I had a great time when I was boxing myself, but to still be involved with the media, with the training side of things, I'm like, I'm, honestly, I'm, I'm so lucky. I really am. Yeah. So I mean, after the Daniel Gill fight, obviously, that I mean, spectacular night for yourself, kind of reaching the pinnacle of the yeah. sport. Is there any kind of? Do you have any feelings of wanting to get back into the ring? Absolutely doing a bit not. Of there was that bit of tongue and cheek banter with Sergio Martinez, uh, but not absolutely no chance. I'm so content with what I achieved and some but I still can't believe it you say from world champion I still can't believe it you know I'm so amazed that I was able to, to do that and I guess there's probably a lot of people out there that are amazed that I've done it but I did and I'm, I'm so happy and pleased with my achievements and like I say I'm, I pitch myself with the day that I'm still uh, involved in this great sport yeah. And you still are kind of, you do have a, a good like position and role in, in the sport with obviously yeah. your 12 by 3 yeah. uh, gym. Yeah. Uh, is that in uh, Paddington 12 by 3. as well? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we've got one in all gate, one in Paddington, one just around the corner from here actually. Uh, that's where Dave's been training, the, the one in Paddington. Yeah, I do uh, the last word, off the scales and before the bell with Matchroom, three shows that are shown on all their social media platforms. Yeah. Um, and yeah, a little bit of Sky, I'm working tonight on the Lomachenko Quala. So yeah, I'm like massively involved in the sport and I love it. Yeah, what is your uh, prediction for obviously the Sydney Lomachenko defenses, uh, lightweight title against Anthony Quala tonight? Um, do you, as, as a brick, kind of want you to see Quala kind of pull up the, uh, the upset, the underdog mentality? Uh, how do you see that fight playing out? Oh, it's, it's near on impossible and I, I will have both my fingers and toes crossed. Um, but how do you beat him? You know, for me, if I was Joe Gallagher, I would be advising Crawler to, to completely mix things up, be, be very unorthodox. Don't stick to one thing, because Lomachenko will suss you out, so you've got to have so much variation in your work. 
Uh, but yeah, of course, one of the nicest guys in British boxing, in boxing full stop, and I, and I really hope he can do the, the impossible. Yeah, and another unbeaten prospect from the uh, 12 by 3 gym, Louis Lin, uh, Kevin Mitchell's protege. I mean, uh, sort of looking at his uh, progress in his um, kind of quest for uh, titles in uh, 2019, but also kind of developing under Kevin's tutelage. I mean, how pleased are you to see the progression Louis made, particularly his uh, career? Yeah, he, he lives and breathes the sport, Louis. It's everything to him. And, that's no surprise, he's done so well so far. Uh, he's doing great work with Kevin Mitchell, and I just want to say quickly, um, condolences to the, the Kevin Mitchell and his family for the loss of his brother, Vinny. Uh, he's a great guy, he fought my brother numerous times in the amateurs, and yeah, it'd, it'd be greatly missed, and the funeral's on Wednesday next week, so you know, if you're in the area, pop down. Um, yeah, my, my heart really goes out to him. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I like, I love Louis, and I wish him all the best. Yeah, no, definitely. I'm gonna echo that. Condolences to the uh, the Mitchell family, and uh, Darren hey. and I appreciate you giving uh, your time today. And a pleasure Cheers. meeting Great. you again. Nice in the Cheers. Thomas Lyons wraps on nice TV. One. Darren Barker, top man. Yeah.